Hey, Doug here. So the episode you're about to listen to is with uh, David Pascalone. And boy, let me tell you, there is just so much gold in that episode. I was expecting to be kind of a normal digital marketing type of episode. Boy, was I wrong. He had uh, just fastballs right over the plate. Yo, make sure you have your pen and paper. Don't let anything distract you because there is there's just gold left and right on this episode. So anyway, please keep listening. And we hope you get as much benefit from the conversation as I did. So the big question is this, how do value obsessed leaders ascend their business and life to world-class levels of effectiveness, even if they're inside a bureaucracy or starting from scratch with absolutely no capital? That is the question, and this podcast is going to bring you the answer. My name is Doug Utberg, and this is the Terminal Value Podcast. Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. We have David Pasqualone here, and we're going to be talking about demystifying digital marketing. And the website, unsurprisingly, is davidpasqualone.com. That's D-A-V-I-D-P-A-S-Q-U-A-L-O-N-E. So, but actually in, in the pre-interview, one of the things we were talking about is about how many businesses just unfortunately get taken to the cleaners by different agencies who are trying to pitch them on either SEO or like say local marketing or ads or search or whatever. And the, the thing about digital marketing is that it's a place where there is bountiful opportunity, but you can also waste an unlimited amount of money if you don't have really disciplined, really well-tracked efforts. So David, introduce yourself, tell us a, a little more, and don't let me talk too much. No, no, it's great to be here, Doug. Thank you. And to your audience, hopefully this episode brings you value. There's a thousand ways we can go with it, but you know, over the last 30 years, I've been working since I was six and yeah. working full-time since I was 11, but anything to do with sales and marketing. That's yeah, my yeah. passion, my love. And today I think sticking to a focus of just your website, when people are typing in a search engine, probably Google, right? Or YouTube, what's coming up and are you showing up? Because pretty soon right now, search engines like Google are yeah. very much pay to play. Uh -huh. And over the next five years, it's going to become more and more so. Everything's becoming controlled and locked down. If you want to show up, you have to pay. So I've been working with my clients and doing a lot of things organically that are working uh -huh. fantastic and bringing results. So that's something we should probably take time to talk about today. Yeah. Well, and uh, because, you know, and in the pay to play marketplace, right, there is a situation when that can work. But at least in my view, I think that before you get to where you're really paying to drive traffic, you need to really have, you know, essentially in the current era, you really need to have a multi-stage sales funnel built out so you can understand what that traffic is going to be worth before you pay to bring it in. Because I think the problem is that if you start from paid, the amount that you're going to have to pay to find, to get enough traffic, to find out whether your funnel is working or not is going to be a prohibitively large number. And I, I think that's actually where a lot of businesses get stuck is that, you know, is that they don't know what the traffic is worth. They don't know how much they should pay for it. And so, you know, what you do is, okay, you turn on some paid ads, you start getting some traffic, you're like, okay, hundred, all right, 200, okay, 300, all right, 400, I'm not getting any calls yet. <laughs> And then, you know, as the amount just keeps racking up and racking up and you're like, okay, uh, what, what's going on here? I'm not getting any results. And the tabs just, you know, the tabs just, just click it up. Yep. And you wonder, is that even a real human or a bot? Correct. Right. And that's just, that's it too. Yeah. And with a well laid out marketing plan, you have different pieces going on simultaneously. So I'm not saying you should never do, you know, pay per click yeah. or any kind of paid promotion. But what I am saying is if you can spend a hundred dollars or $10,000 on marketing this week, why get a return of five when you can get a return of 25 or a hundred? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you always want to look at the return on investment. So it's not about the money you're investing. It's about what's my return on that investment. And with organic, it's a slow and steady process, yeah. but it's super profitable and people should be doing it. So I always look at my clients. The first thing we do is we run their all their client facing digital and physical yeah. tools. We evaluate everything. We align, here's your goal where you want to be. Here's where you realistically are. Then we reverse engineer the plan. And if you're watching this, see how my fingers yeah. are going crooked. It's never a straight line, but you got to work 
get the plan, work the plan, and then it's successful. So where do you want to go from here, Doug? The thing that I'd like to think about is, okay, so let, let's say that we have somebody who is, you know, let's say they're, they're getting their own business off the ground because, you know, as I'm fond of saying, uh, right, you know, th- this show is for value obsessed leaders. And that can be either somebody who is starting and growing their own business or somebody who is inside a corporate career. But if you are a value focused, value obsessed person, and even if you're in a corporate career, it is only a matter of time before you're going to be getting your own business going because, you know, at some point, that corporate career is going to end. And the kind of people who listen to this show are not the type of people who will be okay to just sit on their couch and watch TV. They're always going to be doing something. And so you might as well be growing a business that's built around what you're really passionate about. So what I really like people like to really unpack today is really how you go about kind of going from what I would call zero to influencer. And I have a little bit of a personal bug, personal bone to pick with this one here is because like almost every influencer that I see on any social channel who's pitching their whatever, how to be an influencer, almost every single one of them either A, had an audience before the social channel started or B, was on the social channel at the very beginning. And so they got just a metric ton of free traffic. And that is no help at all to people like me who are trying to go from zero audience to a, you know, to a thriving, robust tribe. There's not really a template that I've seen. It's not really a reliable playbook out there for that, that I've seen. Now it might exist, but I haven't seen it because almost everything out there is really somebody who is an existing influencer telling the way that they did it that is not repeatable. Yeah, exactly. And that is a huge problem. I mean, there's so many self-help gurus out there. There's so many quote unquote marketing experts Yeah, and they have no real life experience. They literally are, and I'm going to be blunt, they're good looking, they have yeah. good connections or they, you know, had the anomaly. And so that doesn't mean all influencers are like that, but what you're saying is true. The average person can't implement that because it was a rarity. So yeah. like our, we have a podcast, the Remarkable People podcast, yeah. and we have people you've heard of, people you've never heard of, but they share their stories in a practical way where they share the steps of how they did it. So not just what they achieved or overcame, yeah. but here's the practical steps of how they did it. So we can too. Exactly. So what you're saying is it's so frustrating that you hear all these people, oh, give me $3,000 and I'll put you through this course on how to grow your business. And they just talk about themselves. That's not how business is done. So for instance, you want to become an influencer. Okay. Well, you need a central hub. Yep. Now there's all sorts of social media outlets, but you need a central hub for conversion. So let's just say in this illustration, the right fit is a website. So we build a website that's fully optimized correctly and properly built, mainly for mobile, Mm -hmm. then you have your social media outlets, whether it's TikTok, YouTube, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Facebook, whether it's anything, Yeah, you have all those driving into your site. Now, listen to me. The majority of websites out there make a huge mistake, even some of the Fortune 100 companies. And yeah, who's Dave Pasquale and what's he know? I know about making my customers a lot of money. And if you have a brain, think about what I'm about to say. Why are you spending thousands of dollars on social media to drive people to your website? And then most people have social media links all over their website, driving them back out to look at a monkey dancing in a bikini. Don't do that. You want low hanging fruit is bring people to your website make it valuable content that is a sales funnel that leads to a call to action and then get rid of the social media links all over your website. Because think about it. The purpose of social media is to drive them to your site or a phone call, not for you to entertain them. The entertainment is to bring them to you to convert a sale. So right off the bat, if you're looking at your website, you've got all these little cute icons in the footer and the header and all over your pages cut them out unless there's a distinct and unique purpose that suits what you're doing, like a contest or some kind of special campaign. Uh That's the first tip. Cut out social media from your website. It should drive to it, but you shouldn't drive to them. 
Got it. Got it. Well, I think that's a little gold to, to take out of this episode right away. So what are some of the other nuggets that you've seen? Because, you know, I like that we have a really kind of a practical vibe going here, because I think that the, uh, you know, the way that things were done, like say, you know, 15, 10, five, even three years ago, I'd say really almost really don't apply. You know, the rules are just changing so fast. And, you know, it kind of feels a little odd because it feels to me like people either A, we're, we're there at the beginning. And so now they're kind of essentially monetizing their audience. Their audience will essentially build itself because they already have momentum. Or there's people who are kind of checked out and not trying. And there's people, then there's us who are like, okay, well, you know what? I don't ex- already have an audience. I'm trying to put one together. And I'm you're basically hustling, trying to figure out what's going to get me there. And I think that's actually what one of the things is that when you go, when you get traffic that you captured, don't send it back out to the <laughs> to the place where it came to you from. It's you know when you have traffic, keep it. Yeah, keep it and convert it, and give them something valuable so they're no, yeah. you're not wasting their time. But I mean, there are so many people like I want to punch people in the face when they say "fake it till you make it." No, the Bible says, "Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thought shall be established." There's something real about putting your effort in and making yeah. things happen. Then you reprogram your mind. But the fake it meaning I'm not qualified. Like I'm not going to go and advertise for something I'm not good at because I won't be able to bring my clients value, yeah. and they shouldn't be paying for me to learn. So when people say "fake it till you make it," that's an ignorant statement if you really think yeah. through it. So what you want to do is you want to market to people, offer them a solution for their needs, and then mm-hmm. deliver what was promised. And it's slow and steady, but it always works. Yeah. And then you have like what you were talking about 20 years ago, 15 years ago, five years ago, three years ago. The market is constantly changing in the approach, but the fundamentals stay the same. If yeah. you build a shed, if you build a house, or if you build a mansion, there's consistent fundamentals of construction. You know, you build the foundation first and this and this, and there's a process website building a, it doesn't matter building a website, building a business. It's the same thing. There's fundamentals you have to follow. So when you're building a website, you want to make sure your domain name is something that people will key in ideally. Now it could be your name of the business, but used auto parts, Pensacola, that's a great domain name and it could yeah. be Butler Auto Recycling. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be your name in there, but you want what people are going to Google or speak into their phone yeah. because pretty much 70% of all traffic now on most sites is coming from the phone. Yeah. And how many times are you, how many times just this week have you been driving? And you're like, hey, Siri, or hey, you know, whatever, Alexa, and you start talking to your phone. That's how people mm-hmm. have to program the page names, the post titles. That's what yeah. you have to put in the meta tags in our websites. So you drive that organic business and capture it. Got it. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. And let's unpack organic a little more too, because it, it's kind of funny, right? I'm just thinking about Google for a little while, right? You know, when Google first started, clicks were extremely cheap. So pay-per-click was the thing, you know, and then then SEO became the thing, you know, which is search engine optimization. I, I try to make sure to explain acronyms so that nobody gets lost in the alphabet soup, you know, but then of course you started getting things like, you know, the link farms and, you know, a bunch of really black hat sp- spammy type of stuff. And so then there was a series of about like, eight or 10 algorithm changes that made it, you know, made it way harder to, to rank organically. And so it's like, you know, if you're trying to magnetize people in kind of organically and, you know, let's say you're starting from nothing, you have no blog, you have no following, no traffic, nothing, you know, you're like, okay, you know what? I just set up hosting. I just installed WordPress. What do I do? Okay. So that's actually an interesting question. I just did this with a client about nine months ago. They were in a very small niche, very small market share, but it was highly profitable, mm-hmm. but there was a ton of competitors in it. Yeah. And we got them in 30 days on page one of Google. After that, the marketing, the company tried to hire me as the marketing director and try to hire the owner as a sales director. And then we just last week got a cease and desist when we didn't even do anything wrong legally. It's a long story, but they were finding our site, seeing our results. And so they're trying to stick their hound dogs after us. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this to brag, but exactly what you're asking is what we're doing in real life with Ascend. Well, then then walk me through it. Yeah. So what you're going to do is, so you get a hosting plan that fits what you're going to do. So what I mean is if you're going to have a shopping site, or yeah. if you're going to have a blog, like an informational site, you're going to have a different amount of traffic. So let's just go, you get your, you, let's just use GoDaddy, for instance. 
Okay. You get your site set up, you buy a domain through GoDaddy, you buy a hosting plan. For the personal side, there's a personal hosting plan called Ultimate. That's probably uh-huh. great for most people. And there's a back end that people don't know about in cPanel where you can set up emails. So you're not paying yeah. five bucks an email a month for free. You know, yeah. when you're starting up, costs are prohibitive. So you get your emails for free. It doesn't matter if you have one website or 25 websites, you can do domain forwarding, you can do everything you can in that account. Now, if you're getting more traffic, go up to their business enhanced plan. So you go from like 20 bucks a month to 50 bucks a month, but you get so much that you don't have to buy or invest more. And you know, there's always security, but when you're actually building your site, build in WordPress, because there's a lot of themes out there, but you don't want to hire a company that's going to charge you to do it in some proprietary system that they built, because then you're locked in. Also, when you hire somebody to build you a website, make sure it's in your account, the domain name, the hosting, because these people all the time, like, okay, you want to leave us? Good. We want $50,000 for your site. You're like, what? You like you just charged yeah. me a year and it didn't bring any results. Yeah, but now we own the the name. So pay us 50,000 or we're going to put a competitor there. People do wrong stuff all the yeah. time. Moral, heck no. Legal, probably not. But dirty, 100%. So you want to get your domain name and your hosting in your own account. Somebody else can manage it, but it's in your own account. Install a universal program like WordPress as your default main engine. So if even if I was designing it, right? If God takes me home, then you can just pick up and get somebody else to continue and carry the torch. Then you want a theme that's functional. Um, I love elegant themes. So they have a bunch of different themes within elegant themes. But now once you're building it, there's plugins. You can write these down. Two of my favorite plugins are Jetpack and Yoast. So Jetpack and Yoast, there's free and paid versions, but on the free versions, you can do so much. Now, take the time to go through each page of them and set them up properly. And then when you're building your pages, think like what we said earlier. Every page name should have a purpose. I just broke, I'm driving my car and I break down. Siri, what's a mechanic near me? And that, something like that great mechanics near me should be the page title. Even though it's a little bit longer, it's something people are speaking. You're going to get more points in the Google algorithm. The Google algorithm is changing all the time. I think last I checked, there was over 220 different points in the algorithms, Uh right? So you want to be getting every point you can get. So when you're building it, you got good plugins you're using that are going to be effective. Yoast, it's really easy. They have a red light, a yellow light, and a green light system. It tells you how your on-page SEO is doing. Then you're putting everything together. Now, when you build a page or a post, you have to do three important things. Number one, link it to a reputable, non-competitive outside source. So, you know, if you're talking about something and you're trying to bring yourself credibility, don't go to the Better Business Bureau because in one click, if they're looking up an auto mechanic, they're going to see 50 other auto mechanics part of the Better Business Bureau. Yeah. But if you go to an article that was like from a .gov site that talks about the number of fatalities from not wearing your seatbelt, that's safe. So you want an outside link. You want a link to within your site to like another article or page because we call it the web. You want to mm-hmm. cross, you want to catch people. And yeah. then you always want to have one to a contact us, a call to action. And there's very simple things you can do. But in another big thing that people skip, oh man, I, I think out of, if I looked at a hundred sites, you know, recently from competitors yeah. for clients that want to come with us, we don't take most of our people that come to us. But when somebody comes to us and we do an evaluation, probably 92 to 95 out of a hundred clients none of the images on their website are labeled. And what I mean is it'll just say image 52978-B. Doesn't have an alt tag. Yes, they should all have every kind of the description, the caption, everything should be, well, not caption, but all of the areas that should be filled out, that can be filled out, should be filled out again with whatever that page's central theme is that you're trying to get people to find in Google. That's what should be on there. And then- People don't realize it that on average, five to 10% of search results from Google come Mm -hmm. through the image. Five to 10% come from videos. So yeah, 80% does come from 
just the standard website searches. Mm -hmm. But if 10% is coming from images and all you do is take 10 seconds to label it, you just made 10% more business. So don't be an idiot. Actually, I'm kind of interested in the videos rabbit hole because like, for example, okay, so then in theory, say if you had a page, what you'd want to do is you'd have, you'd want to have images, you'd want to have, and then you want to have video. And then of course your text that all coordinates in with a similar message. Now with video, do you know, is the search based on just the title, just the headline, or is there also like built in a, say, a sort of parse transcription search as well? Okay. That's a really loaded question. And this is why but I do. Depends. No, 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 no. It just depends what software program you yeah. use. If you're making an audio file or a video file, some of the software will say, Hey, you can load up all your data, creator date, you know, yeah. even album name, artist name, all that info. And you want to load that in because every little bit helps and it only takes seconds. So, but now this is the key. Like we have, again, the podcast, so when we do the podcast, I take the video, which is labeled, put that up on YouTube. Then I make sure the title has those loaded keywords. Then I have the show notes, which is loaded with keywords. And then I tack on a transcript. Transcripts mm -hmm. for the last two years, it was like, oh, you know, I'm doing this. But I, I use the script. If you're using, yeah. if you need any kind of audio or video editing, and you want AI bot to transcribe, the script yeah. is like 20, 25 bucks a month, but you can unlimited transcription. So for yeah. most people, if that's all you use it for, boom, it just paid for itself. I should be getting links for all, I mean, affiliate yeah, links. Yeah, I know, right? right? Yeah, you gotta set up an affiliate program. But the script is a great tool to use and you can edit video, do whatever. But then I've been taking those and putting those up for two years. Well, just a couple months ago, Google decided to start giving points for podcasts and videos with transcriptions. Oh, interesting. So oof, our podcast, I'll jump back, like stuff we haven't looked at in a year episodes, they jumped to the top of the list. Mm -hmm. So it was great. So I hope that answered your question. So with videos, it's a little different because you don't want to use your website to store all your video content because that's just going to be a hog. You want to put it on something like YouTube. Vimeo. Now there's other options, Vimeo, but this is the deal. You know what the top three search engines are in the world? YouTube owned by Google, Google owned by Google, by Google. and Amazon. Yeah. So even though Amazon people think of shopping, it's a search engine. So yeah. you should always have, here's another free gold nugget. I don't care if you're a psychologist, a mechanic, you should have some kind of free ebook or yeah. some kind of product that you can put on Amazon. So again, when people are like, how do I overcome depression? Boom, your ebook pops up. It's also mm -hmm. linked to your website. It's also linked to the organic ranks in Google and all the world comes together on your website where, hello, you convert and you don't send them out to the dancing monkey in the beginning. And I was just thinking, you really want to take it to the next level, take your book on how to overcome depression and turn it into a book funnel, you know, and then like, you know, for example, you put say like a Slack adjuster or one or two upsells, you know, and so for, you know, for people who are, who are kind of new to the idea, the idea of a book funnel is that what you do is you advertise a book. It can either be say like a, you know, a free or paid ebook, or sometimes it's a free plus plus shipping book, which will usually be somewhere between five and $10, which will usually cover either the shipping or maybe the print plus shipping costs, depending on what, how it works out. But basically what it'll do is you'll, you know, people will say, Hey, look, a book, and I'm basically getting, getting it for a really bargain price. Okay. I'll buy it. And then somebody says, Hey, since you bought this book, would you be interested in this upsell opportunity? Maybe say like somewhere between five and 20% will take advantage of the upsell. And then there might be some secondary upsell. Usually two upsells is about as far as you can go before you start really making people upset. Set. So now the, the whole idea behind this kind of funnel is that you can start with a book that, that you're probably not going to make all that much money on, especially if you do a free plus shipping, you might even lose money. Then when you include the advertising cost, you'll definitely lose money. But if you if you layer upsells on top of that, and then you have a follow-up sequence, now you can get to where you have, say, like a $5 book that you have to fulfill that it costs you $20 in advertising that you may still be able to generate, say, like $50 out of your funnel and have it be net profitable. So yes, if you can possibly do that, don't send them to Amazon, sell them the book yourself. Oh yeah, so absolutely. A little and bit of a another, tangent. Another, no, that's a good tangent. Another free tool for your website. Again, once you're in using wordpress.org, not wordpress.com, yeah. wordpress.org, there's so many free plugins and tools. So yeah. WordPress has something called WooCommerce. Yeah. And you can pay thousands of dollars or even hundreds of dollars sometimes for these courses on how to create, you know, a funnel. 
but go yeah. look at a funnel and create yourself with WordPress and elegant themes. I mean, it's easy. Well, but well, and, and Word- like, like you're talking about a funnel, here is the best way to, to look at a funnel is okay. If you're in your niche, sorry, I cut you off. I saw this for all that. I'll let you start going again, but if you're in, I'm your not niche, worried about it, dude, don't worry about it. Okay. okay yeah. Go, go find the people who, you know, you know, it's like, you know, as you're scrolling through your feed, the people whose stuff makes you stop. Okay. A take a screen capture of that because that's the kind of stuff you need to create. Then whatever they're selling, assuming it's not ridiculous, you know, you invest, say a hundred bucks, buy whatever they're selling. And don't throw any of the emails away. Pay attention to everything they send you. Because if you're getting something from a big name, I guarantee they've tested it. If they've tested it, they're showing you what works. You know, just, you know don't, uh, don't copy it word for word. But if they're showing you a format that works, why go beat your own head against the wall? They've already done it. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Observation's free. And God gave us a brain. Use it. Yeah. And that's what we were saying. I, like I said, I wasn't bragging about that startup. Yeah that I was talking about earlier, but mm-hmm. we looked at the top 12 people who did what they did. Yeah. And we took the best parts of each and made one kick butt company. Yeah. And they're immediately turning profit and getting the big players attention. The reason why is because it's working. Yeah. You're like what the hell? Like I had, I had a very famous person on my podcast before and he's like, how are you ranking higher than me? I got a team of 12 people. I'm like, cause I'm Dave Pasquale. I was joking. I was screwing out. Yeah. I'm like, no, man. I'm like, your people are using all the fancy, 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 latest things out there. I said, I'm slow and steady. I said, I will not take clients who want like a million dollars in 30 days. It's not me. I said, yeah. we can probably make that in 30 days, but it's going to take us six months to ramp up to that. I said, yeah. but I want realistic expectations. And dude, I'm not gonna lie to you. I thank God I live on the beach. I want to yeah. enjoy life. I don't want to be working 20 hours right. a day. So whether it's a client or a friend, we got to have the same vision and on the same philosophy and I'm slow and steady. Let's, gotcha. let's move forward. Let's conquer. So that's another thing too. If you're working with a marketing company, you don't get along with, don't uh-huh. work with them. Marketing yeah. oh. companies are a dime a dozen these days. Good ones are rare, but marketing yeah. companies are a dime a dozen. Right. Dropping gold left and right here. Well, let's see. So we're getting pretty close to time for this episode, but give people one or two more insights and then let everybody know where they can. We already know where they can find you. It's you know, davidpasquale.com, but let everybody know where they can find you on social as well. And if you want to shout out your name stack, go hit your website one more time. Go ahead. Oh man, no, I'm good with whatever. I just want to, I truly love to help people. So if you need help or questions, you can go to my website, contact me best with email. So go through the website, davidpasquale.com. You'll find the connect page yeah. and there's even, you know, we can do a consult or we can just have a, you know, schedule a phone call. But another big, big, big suggestion I have is automation. Automate everything you can. You don't want to do monkey work. So for instance, let's just say you want to pre-screen clients. Yeah. Be freaking honest. Yeah. Interested in, you pick the topic so people don't think I'm biased. Pick pick any industry and I'm going to run with that. Okay. All right. Let's say auto detailing. Auto detailing. Okay. So I'd have a website page in the auto detailing and I'd have it set up. Like, now, when you hear, we've used this term a thousand times in order yeah. to define it. A funnel just takes you from broad to a very specific call to action. So you have a page in auto detailing. It's SEO'd well. So Google is picking up the keywords. It's driving yeah. people there. And then you have, hey, interested in our auto detailing service? Watch a short 90-second video to see why. And then when they go on, that's your Mm pre-screening. Like right there, you we're not the cheapest, but we are the best. You know, whatever you're gonna say. I just I hate the word cheap too. It's the we're not the most expensive. But, anyways, but when I like, for instance, we have guests, okay, for our podcast. You have a podcast, I automate all of my applications. So I have a page set up on the website mm-hmm. that if you're interested to be a guest, you go to this page, you read through it. If you think you're still interested and fit, you're going to watch that short 90 second video that tells you, are you sure? Then you're going to fill out an application. The application then gets submitted to me. I review it and it sets up a 15 minute call. Then, and again, to this point, I've touched it. I've saw nothing. Then you and I jump on the call which is literally, okay, at 4.30 today, I push a button and I call. And then from there, it's like, okay, you're approved. Boom. I send you another link. The whole process is automated. So yeah. again, whether you're a car detailer or a podcast host, whether you're selling widgets, it doesn't matter. Automate everything you can 
and make processes that are just successful and evergreen. And it just keeps working over and over again, because I don't want to be sending out invites and reminders and you shouldn't either. And when people are calling you and you're, you're like, I just want a thousand calls a day. Well, that's stupid. No, no you don't. No, you, you can don't. make money. You can make stuff. You can even make more friends, but you can't make more time. So time is just so valuable and we all have a limited time. Everybody's born average of 75 years. You might get more, you might get less, no guarantees, but don't waste your life and your time. And I'd rather be hanging out with my family and friends than I would be doing paperwork. Would you? That precisely, precisely, yeah, so, exactly. So automation, 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 everything you can automate until the sales, the final like if it's a sales call, automate, yeah. get the pre-screening, and then you want a real person, yeah. real person calling them and not to be biased, but if they're from Mexico, they should speak Spanish. If they're from the United States, they should speak clear English. If they're from China, guess what? They should speak Chinese. Don't outsource yeah. your sales. That's like, yeah. that's an accounting move and accountants don't understand sales. Accountants are yeah. great people. Accountants run companies. But accountants and sales are like, you know, oil and water. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Well, David, really appreciate your time. Just outstanding content. Oh, thanks, man. Anything. And if I can help you guys or if anybody wants to have a coaching session or yeah. just kind of run some ideas by each other, like I said, go to my website, reach out to me, davidpasquillon.com, and we'll move forward from there. And then if you want, you can do a promo code Doug50. And I'll give you 50% off whatever coaching you get. Outstanding. Well, hey, Dave, thanks again. Yeah, you're welcome. And I hope you guys see you at the top. All right. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Please feel free to visit me online at www.terminalvalue.biz where you can subscribe, find me on social, and then we can connect and just keep the conversation going. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you and I hope you have a wonderful day. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Life, LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.